It has been a long time since I recorded one of these SIFT videos, and I am doing it right in the peak of final grading. Isn't that the perfect time to do something? I mean, it's a perfect time to fold laundry. It's a perfect time to go listen to podcasts that you've not listened to in a while, but are there in the queue. It's also a perfect time to come here on Blue Sky and get a little fired up. So first step of SIFT is I've got to stop. So I see this tweet, not tweet, whatever they're called on Blue Sky. I don't know, a post from Tressie Cotton McMillan. And I see her, I mean, she just, all she has to do is just say something that gets my brain going. So she says, I went to the Ed Tuck prom this year. It was flush with cheating surveillance technology. It was overwhelming. So I have very strong feelings about surveillance technology and specifically the test proctoring services. And I mean, so many stories just start, I mean, I can already just feel my, my visceral reaction and agreement with her on this coming up. And so we go look at Chris Gilliard's post. He says, which, which she was reposting. It's almost like ed tech companies stir up narratives about students, quote, cheating so they can sell surveillance systems. And I saw Derek Ruff here. Oh, I've heard that concern plenty from plenty of faculty and I continue to hear stories of faculty struggling with this. Although the faculty I know aren't using surveillance systems. So that he's referring to this specific example, but mine are, mine, uh, I haven't even gone and looked. I decided just to start, start cold. All I saw was the tweet. I saw who she was, or the post, saw who she was reposting and commenting on and thought, you know what? It's time to just record another one of those videos we haven't done in forever. I'm going to be teaching a class in the spring of 2024 where I will be using SIFT again and uh, introducing it and teaching it and and having students really create a practice around using SIFT. So perfect time, perfect time, I say sarcastically. So stop. Recognize I have emotional feelings, not emotional, like I have strong feelings. Already fired up, so stop. Uh, next to investigate the source. So it does help that I already know the New York Times and I am familiar with their uh, editorial policies, but and and some of their strengths and weaknesses as journalists, etc. But let me go as if I didn't. I would I wouldn't necessarily, by the way, need to do this every time because I already know. I mean, I've been here before, but just for the purposes, like if students are watching this, this is what you might do if you weren't already familiar with who the New York Times is. So, a daily newspaper based in New York City large, large readership, lots of subscribers in their digital only, and then some uh, fewer, obviously, because of where the trends are going with how people read the news, uh, fewer, fewer print publication, uh, publications, but still substantial, founded all the way back in 1851. I didn't actually remember that. And talks a little bit about the history of the New York Times, why were they created, and who owns them. It's important to know who owns publishing companies because there can be a conflict of interest between what the entity that owns it and the journalism that it produced. These things can cause friction. So we need to know who the ownership is of the different um, news agencies that we may read and talking a little bit more about su Supreme Court cases and freedom of the press. By the way, side note, really good movie about the Pentagon Papers. Oh gosh, I just clicked on something and I don't know what just happened. Okay, so the Pentagon Papers, really good movie. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Okay, I'm not gonna stop now because this would be another rabbit trail I could go on, but it was so good. I learned so much about the Pentagon Papers and that part of our history and just just the power of good journalism. If only I could remember the name of the movie. Some of you, if you're watching this, all two of you watching this are shouting out the name of the movie right now. It's so good. Put it in the comments if you actually are watching this and you know the name of that movie. That was so, so good. Okay, more history. A uh, little bit about some gender discrimination in their employment. What is their slogan? 
um, who's on their news staff, a little bit more about how they publish the news, public editors, and then really important. So now we're really talking. We're really talking an editorial stance. Going to be really important to know that about a news source. So if I didn't, if I wasn't already familiar with their editorial stance and how they attempt to protect the integrity of their journalism, then I would need to really slow down and read more here. Something important that some people get wrong about the New York Times is that a lot of us don't know how to distinguish the op-ed. These are opinion pages. So if you go to any newspaper, whether it's the New York Times, whether it's the Wall Street Journal, no matter what it is, understanding and knowing when we're reading editorial, editorial as in opinion pieces. Now, if people can write opinion pieces that are more grounded in evidence to support their opinions versus others, but it's really important for us to know, are we reading the New York Times opinion section or are we reading the New York Times um, more journalistic kinds of news that would have different processes that they would go through to uh, protect the integrity of those reported, researched um, journalistic pieces. So a little bit about their style. By the way, I'm done, but but um, just see if there's anything else really important. If you're not already familiar with who the New York Times is, talks that they have podcasts as well, side note. Really, really like that. It's not even listed here. Maybe I should edit this page and add the uh, Ezra Klein show. So, so good. One of their wonderful podcasts. Okay. Uh, uh, important if you weren't already familiar with the New York Times, it would be important for you to know um, and read more the citations and about their accusations of having a liberal bias. This would be important to review and read and, and consider in um, how you want to decide on, on reading from the New York Times. There was a, this one I remember, really famous plagiarism case all the way back in 2023. But if you had said the name Jason Blair to me, I would probably have remembered this guy from all the way back then, a really famous plagiarism case. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah. I spent way longer on this particular one. Oh my gosh, how is it seven minutes already? So I've investigated the source way more than you and I wish I would have. Um, I'm just feeling like I'd see so many student videos when they come do the same thing that I'm doing now. And this can be hard for them if they're not already familiar with the source. Okay, I've investigated the source way more than I should have wanted to. Okay, so find better coverage. So what is happening here? The cheating fears over chatbots were overblown, new research su suggests. Again, I have not already researched this, so I'm going to... AI tools like ChatGPT did not boost the frequency of cheating, Stanford researchers say. So I know I'm going to want to find better coverage. But I, before I do that, I kind of want to skip because I'm worried about how long this video is getting. I want to skip to trace claims and quotes because I want to see, like, do they link to... Okay, here we go. So I'm skipping to the T part of SIFT, the trace claims, quotes, and media to the original context. And so here is from Stanford. I'm making sure, like, are we actually on Stanford's website? We are. This is their graduate school of education website a story under their news what do ai chatbots really mean for student cheating so this is by scholars victor lee and denise pope they talk about research and how often students cheat so given that you're not going to want me to read this entirely i'm going to bookmark this because i want to come back and actually read it thoroughly since i'm really interested in artificial intelligence. And these are things I have read a lot about and can come back and read more about when you're not watching me do this live. Okay, is AI chat cheating a plagiarism? This is not, by the way, plagiarism is kind of a blurry thing, but some professors would call this plagiarism when you use AI, some would not, but I'm just capturing all the things. 
Okay. Oh, I should also do sifting because that's my, what I do when I create these videos. I call that sifting. That's my, yeah. Okay. Okay. So lots of students are cheating. We know that. What should we do? What we're trying to, by the way, really, really important in Mike Caulfield's SIFT model is that we know what our goal is. Um, so I could, I could go read all this whole article, which I just told you I wouldn't, but I want to know if the Stanford researchers research said that AI tools did not actually boost the frequency of cheating in high schools. So I, I really have to focus in on that. It's triggered an alarm, certainly. But is that accurate? Is that what this report is saying? AI is not going away. We need to address deeper reasons why students cheat. I think of AI literacy as being akin to a driver's ed. We've got a powerful tool that can be a great asset, but it can also be dangerous. Students need to learn it responsibly. I'm still looking for the report though, like this, the actual study that they're referring to, and I'm not seeing it yet. So some resources to help high school students. Okay, some 60 to 70% of students have reported engaging in at least one cheating behavior. That, okay, here it is, it's right here, it's right here. That percentage has stayed the same or even decreased slightly in our 2023 surveys. So it, the question are being asked here, did all this like, oh my gosh, everyone is cheating. Were those potentially overblown? It looks like the, the original Stanford researchers are telling us it's about the same, if not slightly lower in terms of those, those concerns. So I've done the T and now I just need to do the find better coverage. So I would wanna find our other news organizations repeating this same claim and have done the same thing, you know, in terms of verifying it. So I want to say 2023 Stanford Research AI chat GPT cheating not as extreme or frequent. Yeah, I'm getting it's 12 minutes. Oh my gosh. Okay. So here's a New York Times story. There's the Stanford. Okay, so this is from the Kansas City Star. TechCrunch is a news organization. It's focused on technology. Imagine that it's called TechCrunch. They crunch the stories about technology. Science news, I am familiar with this. And by the way, I'm not familiar with the Kansas City Star. I think I've heard of it before, but I couldn't like tell you as much as I could clearly tell you about the New York Times. Uh, Fortune magazine. I'm familiar with Fortune and its overall aims and strengths and weaknesses. Yep, and then Wired magazine. So it's interesting. This one just is this story just come out from yeah December thirteenth, and so this story this story's been going around for a while because because this story Fortune. By the way, it's blocked by a pay paywall. So I just saw this. I can't believe I'm telling you this and it's 13 minutes into this video, but I just saw this thing from Alan Levine, otherwise known as Cogdog. His tech tools RSS feed is like candy for me. It's also really good for me. So it's like candy and vegetables all ground together and tasting delicious. But uh, he had something where you can get around a paywall the other day and I haven't tried it yet, but I'm kind of interested in how I could go to a website and get around this paywall just to be able to read this story, but I'm, I'm going to learn more about that. So science news. Teachers are concerned about cheating. Let me see if I can do a quick find to see Stanford. Okay, that's about there. Okay, so this is a different uh, body of research. This is Stanford's student-run newspaper, but a student-run newspaper polled students that is reporting 
somewhat similar statistics. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not the exact report that we were just looking at, but starting to feel like this is... Yeah, so it looks like these stories are more... This is a research from Stanford, more about that the detectors of the use of ChatGPT don't work very well. They have a more what are called false, false positives that we should worry about. So yeah, not really getting me as much other coverage. But this one will, I think. So let's, this one will, I think. So let's do Stanford. Aha! <laughs> Victory is mine. If I could only spell Stanford without looking at it. Okay, new research. I can spell Stanford without looking at it. I'm just nervous because now we are at 15 minutes. My gosh, I hope you're watching this on double time. Okay, new research from Stanford University shows that the popularization of chatbots have not caused an increase in cheating. Victory is mine and yours too because this video is almost over. So yeah, I mean, I think back to my original purpose, why I was reading this and feeling incensed about it in the first place, the original post from Chris Gilliard, and then the reposted one from Tressie Cotton McMillan. And I have stopped. I have investigated the source. I have found better coverage. I have traced claims, quotes, and media, as in this case, the report from Stanford University researchers to its original context. And this would normally not have taken me seven min 17 minutes to do. It is partially because I don't know who's gonna watch this video and for what purpose. And if you're wanting to do these steps, I feel like I have to elaborate more on them. That I would have skipped so many steps because I already would have known New York Times. Like uh, that all just shows up when I see it. I, I already know all of that stuff. So I don't have to go every time to look and see that source and investigate it and because I've done that before with the SIFT model many, many, many times and yeah, I've been subscribed to some of our podcasts, read stories like this one and others. So yeah, um, yeah, but that's SIFTing, baby. And that's uh, 17 minutes I wasn't grading. So I'm gonna stop this video. Thanks for watching. Would love to hear in the comments anything that you um, had to think while you're watching or if you were screaming out the answer to my question that I had earlier that now I can't even remember what it was. Anyway, hope you're having a great day. Bye everybody.